the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Christos Anisti, Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing eternal life. As you know, this is Thomas Sunday, and people are asking the same question as Thomas was asking, and essentially that is, how can I believe if I didn't see? People are looking for some kind of phenomena or some kind of miracle that points to believing. They want God to jump when they say jump. It's as if God is a puppet in our hands and he's supposed to do exactly what we tell him to do. Thomas asked for such a sign in today's gospel. Unless I see in the hands the print of the nails and place my fingers in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. It's like he, he wanted to tie God down to seeing with the eyeballs. You know the expression, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Everybody says that. Seeing is believing. People keep saying that in today's world, there's no room for faith. Faith is archaic. Faith is a thing of the past. No such thing as faith anymore. Today we have to live by what we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we can actually find tangible. Everything has to be proven in a test tube. You have to analyze it under a microscope. It's as if you can analyze love. It's as if you can assess compassion. It's as if you can see honor. How do you see all those? Right? They're not, they're not visible to the eye, but we know that they exist. Seeing is believing, is what the world tells us. Some physicists talk about things called photons, right? For you guys that study physics. Photons. And they travel about 186,000 miles per second at the speed of light. We cannot see photons. Yet we believe the scientists that photons exist. Electrons, protons, or let me go further. Protein, carbohydrates. Have you seen a carbohydrate? We don't see those things. We don't see it with the naked eye. But science asks us to believe in the existence of these things, and we do. But when we're asked to have a little bit of faith in the resurrection of Christ, there are people who doubt. One day there was a man who was doubting, and he spoke to God pretty harshly. He doubted that God existed, and he spoke to him and said, God, if you're truly alive, make something special happen in front of me. And he woke up early in the morning, and he sat outside. He perched himself up on a hill, and he saw the sunrise. Right? A beautiful, picturesque setting. And then he heard some of the birds chirping. And then he heard some of the kids were playing and singing as they were walking to their schools. And then it got later in the day, and he saw a beautiful sunset. And then it got towards the night, and he saw the stars lit up, and he saw the moon with all of its glory. And at the end of the night, he said, God, where were you? Show me. How come you didn't show me a sign? You don't exist. Call them a fish sign. What was that in front of you? This is a man who was seeing and yet didn't believe. The opposite of photons where you didn't see, but we believe. It doesn't make sense. Put things in perspective. In terms of God's existence and having a sign, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about that one time and he was referring to his resurrection when he said, an evil generation seeks for a sign, but so no sign will be given to it except the sign of prophet Jonah. For as you know, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Right? He was kind of prophesying about his being buried and risen again. And no sign can ever be greater than this resurrection, the cornerstone of our faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ also at one time said to them, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And they looked at him like he's crazy because it took them 46 years to build the temple. But he wasn't talking about the walls of the temple. He was talking about his body. 
that he would raise himself up after three days. But people today, they're still asking the same question, I can't see God, therefore he's not there. It's true that we can't see God because he is spirit. When we're, on pain, when we're in pain, unfortunately, we can't see God. When we're in a desperate situation, unfortunately, we can't see God. When we're having marital issues, we can't see God. When we're threatened by a problem, we can't see God. When we're disillusioned, we can't see God. But the important thing is, God is seeing us. In whatever situation we have, God is seeing us. The faith by which and in which we live, which enables us to conduct our living and our dying with dignity, is not that we can see, but it's that we are seen. We are seen. God has his eyes fixed on us. It doesn't matter whether we can see him or not. St. John Chrysostom said once, Thomas doubted that we might have faith. Thomas doubted so that we might have faith. And the Apostle John in his epistle says that faith is believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that believing you might have life in his name. Now, Thomas, when he finally approached our Lord Jesus Christ, like in today's gospel, he didn't have to touch him. He didn't have to feel his tangible body when he appeared to him. Instead, he himself was touched by the risen Lord. Do you see the contrariness there? He was touched by Christ at this encounter. Right? What Christ is looking for is faith. And throughout history, people of faith have been touched by the risen Lord. And what happens when you get touched by the risen Lord? Well, you're touched with forgiveness. You're touched with power over sin to overcome. You're touched with love. You're touched with hope in the next life. Right? They didn't need any kind of a proof. They were touched by Christ. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God, and he believed right away. And Christ at one time said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you will see greater miracles than the ones that I've performed? If you believe, you will see. Not if you see, you believe. If you believe, you will see greater miracles. And of course, one simple example of this was when Christ healed the man who was lying down next to the pool for 38 years. And later on in the book of Acts, we find that the apostles healed the man who was paralyzed for 40 years. Which one is the greater miracle? Of course, the one who was lying down for 40 years, a longer period of time in his infirmity. And so Christ's instructions to them came true, that they would see glorious things if they believed first. So seeing is believing? No. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Believing is the only type of seeing. It's the person who believes who can see. He sees God all around him. He sees the, the whole universe like a sacrament. He sees the world like a burning bush. He sees the purpose and meaning in life. He sees who he really is. He sees the value in God's eyes. He sees his value in the eyes of God. He sees God in Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. And in believing, his eyes are opened. St. Augustine once wrote, Faith is to believe what we do not see. And the reward of that faith is to see what we believe. So the reward of having faith is the eyes being opened to see. So believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. One quick exa example I'm going to end here. If you remember Saul, Saul was blind until he met Christ on the road to Damascus. He believed in him and the scales fell off his eyes and he was able to see. For this first time in his life, he saw the one true God. So faith itself is our eyes. Faith is sight. To believe is to see. Christ said, have you believed because you have seen me? Well, blessed are those who have not seen and yet what? Yet believe. Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet believe. So it's faith. It's not seeing. That's the real miracle. It's when we believe that we can truly see. There was one spiritual author who said, all I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for what I have not seen. I'll say that again. All that I have seen teaches me to trust in the Creator and all those things that I have not seen. So just to believe, just to believe in our Savior Jesus Christ and His resurrection opens the eyes of all of those who are blind, including ourselves, so that we can see once again to the glory of His holy name. Glory be to God forever. Amen.